Hey guys. Okay, I am back with hopefully the final lesson. This one, if it ends up getting, being too long, I'll, I'll break it up and stop and come back. But the area of origin activity that we would have done today in class, um, we're going to try to do this together online. It may actually be a good thing that it's on video because, you know, some of you kind of like to talk a little in class and not pay attention. And then you go, wait, what am I supposed to do? So now you can just go back and watch the video again or at least the part of the video. So maybe this will end up being a good thing. Um, this is going to be the last activity we do um, for chapter eight, and then you're gonna, we're going to start reviewing and take a test online on Friday. So that'll be new territory. We'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, um, so you should have your book, activity six. We're actually going to move. We've practiced the area of convergence. Um, hopefully you guys are, you know, practiced it a little bit. Maybe you didn't. It's totally up to you, but you've got to be able to do it to do this activity. So hopefully you did a little bit of practice and, and figured out some of these from the previous video. So now we want to go into area of origin. So you've got your book, Activity 6. It's on page 271. I'm just going to kind of read the intro. So in the previous activities, you determined the angle of impact, okay, which is that's the one um, at where we had to use the um, – measure the width and the length of each blood drop and then use the inverse sign to figure out its angle. And then the area of convergence for blood spatter, which is the one we just did. Where we're drawing the little lines and finding the area where they intersect. Now you're going to apply that knowledge and a law of tangents to estimate the height or position of the wound, um, the area of origin or the source of the blood spatter. So basically, uh, yes, we have a 2D idea of where the blood was coming from, but now we want to get an actual height. Um, and so, anyway, just bear with me. Okay, so blood spatter analysis helps crime scene investigators reconstruct what happened at the crime scene. By estimating the angle of impact along with the area of origin, investigators can determine if the physical evidence left behind by the blood spatter is consistent or inconsistent with the events described by witnesses. I'm reading this because this may be important later when you answer some questions. So... Just might want to make a note. Um, most of the information you need to answer your questions is always in the lab. You just have to go back and read it for these activities. So, for example, it even gives you some examples. Shocking. In domestic abuse cases, the victim may lie to protect the abusing partner. A victim may state that a head injury occurred as a result of a fall rather than abuse. Remember the opening case study that we read about the woman who said she fell down the stairs, but there was blood on the wall and blood on her husband's fist, and so it didn't, it wasn't consistent with the blood. The blood wasn't consistent with what the witness was saying. Um, so, however, if the blood spatter patterns are inconsistent with this type of injury, then the question becomes what type of injury did cause the blood spatter? What actually happened? Is the witness lying? Further investigations required when the blood spatter evidence reveals a different account of the incident than described by the witness. So this is important. This is a huge, huge part of um, current forensics is is doing all this blood spatter analysis so this is kind of our biggest challenging chapter after, you know besides dna okay so there's a lot to this lesson so just hang with me okay so basically in this activity you're going to be we're not going to be worrying about direction too much and um and we're not going to be working on velocity we're going to be focusing on these things here the length and width of the blood droplets to figure out angle of impact you guys have done that uh, the lines of, con in which I would have had your returned graded ones to give back to you, but wait, I don't have that, so you're just going to have to go back and look at the activity in the book or your notes. Uh, the lines of convergence indicating the area of convergence. That's just what we did on the previous video. And then the distance from the center of convergence. We are going to practice measuring the distance, but it's a little tricky to get it completely correct. So on the problems that you have to work on your own, I'm just going to give you the distance. And then the, area, the area of origin by applying the law of tangents. So basically, this is a lot of trig here. Um, a little bit of math review you can read through. It talks about basically when you have like a 90 degree angle. Okay. Sorry, my dog is distracting me. Uh, uh, when you have a 90 degree angle triangle or, or right triangle, um, the across from the, um, um, I can't even talk. Across from the 90 degree angle is your hypotenuse, right? Um, and the line that goes, um, uh, the longest side of the right triangle that's opposite the 90 degrees, the hypotenuse, it's it listed down here. 
And then the adjacent side is closest to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So this is my adjacent side. We're not going to call it hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. We're actually going to call this the height. Okay, and we're going to call this the distance. So these are the important, we're going to take this idea in math and we're going to use it to, if the uh, area of convergence was here, what's the distance from the area of convergence to the very edge of the blood droplet where it first hit, remember it, it hits here and then it just keeps going and leaves a tail. So this is the distance we want to know, the area of convergence to the edge of the blood droplet and uh, that can be measured. Okay, once you find area of convergence, you know, investigators can get out and measure this, but what they don't know is the height. So, and we can calculate this angle because we learned how to do that. So we can find this information, we can get this information, and then the goal is to figure out the height. How do I find height? And so we're going to use some trig to figure that out. Okay, so that's the main thing you need to know that we're going to be doing. And I'm going to show you just an easy way to just kind of, if you can plug in numbers to a formula, you can do this. Okay, so we're going to start off with looking over here. And the first thing you're going to do is you have to use a couple of different drops of blood, draw along the main axis of each droplet, start the line from the edge of the droplet of the blood and draw it to the opposite direction. Basically what we just did earlier. You draw your two lines, you have to have at least two blood drops that you come up with your area of convergence. Then once you've determined the area of convergence, you're going to measure the distance from the middle of the area of convergence. You try to find the middle as best as you can. Excuse me. To the edge of the drop of blood where it first struck the surface. So it really first struck the surface right here. And this blood drop struck the surface right here. Now, yes, you're going to come up with different distances. So if I was an investigator that was investigating this crime, I would take the calculation for every single blood drop. We're only going to do one. I'm only going to make you pick one blood drop. And I'm going to tell you which blood drop to pick so we're all doing the same one and can come out with the same answers. But if I was really investigating this, I would measure this distance and I would measure this distance. I, and if there was five blood drops, I'd measure them all. I mean, you, you would be extremely thorough. But we're just kind of practicing. Sorry, I'm kind of wiggly. Um, okay, so... Um, don't worry about that. They're just telling you that the dotted line is uh, what's going to be our adjacent, which again is distance. Okay, the distance from the area of convergence to the edge of the blood droplet. And we're trying to find this. This is our mystery that we're trying to find out. Okay, so we keep going. This is going to get really long. I may have to stop it again. Um, so you're going to determine the angle of impact. Remember this? This is the one we did where you guys created the blood drops and then we came back to class and I had you guys get rulers out and you measured um, the length and the width. And we took the, the in this uh, example, and they have great examples if you guys will just take the time and look through this. Okay, the width was 14 millimeters, the length was 45 millimeters. You take the width, divide it by the length, and you come up with a... Uh, a decimal that's out four places and then you use the inverse sign on your calculator and you came up with 18 degrees and here's something cool if you don't know how to do it on your calculator the back of our book actually has a a table for this so let me show you that really quick before I forget so I have it marked with just like a little tab to go to the back in the back of your book there's appendix uh, B which is the table of tangents and appendix A which is a table of signs so like on that one that we were just doing, what was the example we were just looking at where it's 0.3111. If I don't know how to do it on my calculator and I can't remember, I can just go to my table of signs and find the closest, let's see, 0.3. I would say that this one, 0 0.3090 is the closest to 0 0.3111 and that's 18 degrees, which is I think what they came up with. So if you don't know how to do it on your calculator, just go to the table in the back, find the decimal. Once you've done the division um, here, you've actually taken this number and divided it by, taken the width and divided it by the length and get your four digit um, decimal, you can just go to the back of the book and look it up the number that's the closest. So you don't have to be able to do it on your calculator. Okay, so then once you have your degrees, this is where things get a little dicey. Um, because now we want to try to figure out the tangent of an angle. Well, here's the complicated tangent of an angle is basically the opposite over the adjacent. Remember, we're going to call the opposite is the height, okay? 
and the adjacent is the distance. They don't have it labeled here. Um, so I'm going to write that actually in my notebook. And we're going to go through example one right here. Okay, so for my for my example, I want to know that it's the um, the tangent of an angle, and you might want to write this down. Okay, basically is equal to um, the height divided by the distance, which really in mathematical terms is the opposite over the adjacent, but we're going to say the height over the distance because opposite is, is being represented by height here and uh, the um, adjacent is being represented by the distance. So this is, this is what you need to know to be able to do um, the assignment today. So let's just look at the first example and we'll work through it together. It says crime scene investigators did, to, and if you guys need to pause the video, pause the video. I'm just going to keep going rather than trying to make another video. Um, crime scene investigators detected blood spatter on the floor of the kitchen. The investigators drew lines of convergence and measured the distance from the center of the area of convergence to the leading edge of the drop of blood. That distance was recorded as 5.75 feet. Most of the time in these examples, they're just going to give us the distance because we can't actually measure it. After measuring the length and the width of the blood droplet and using the law of signs, it was determined that the angle of impact was 27 degrees. So the police wanted to determine the area of origin or the height from the floor to where the person was bleeding. This is what the police want to figure out. So I don't want to write a pen in my book. This is what, what we're trying to figure out. Okay, we can, this was basically determined by the area of convergence where we draw the lines. This distance is then measured to the edge of the drop uh, right here where the drop starts. Then you did width and length and came up with your 27 degrees. So this we know how to do, this we know how to do, this is what we're going to try to figure out next. And we're just going to use this formula, okay, to figure that out. It's not that bad. Now, it's explained in quite detail down here, um, but let's see here. Yeah, this right here, okay, is basically what I wrote in my notebook. I just haven't added 27 degrees yet because they gave us 27 degrees. So if I want to find out what this height is, I want to use this formula, okay, and they already gave us the tangent, okay? I mean, they already gave us the angle, uh, angle of impact. So I'm going to take that information. Okay, I'm going to cover this for now and just use my book uh, and hope that I can remember all the things. So that we said that the angle was, uh, it's a tangent of, was it 27 degrees? I think that's right. Okay, it's going to be equal to height over distance. Okay. Um, so first I got to do is figure out, well, what is the tangent of 27 degrees? Well, if you know how to do that on your calculator, good for you. I don't know how to do that on my calculator. So I am going to use, because and a lot of students don't know how, which is fine. We're going to go back to the back of the book. So we got to have your book. And then go to the table of tangents. Okay, the table of tangents, I'm looking for, what degrees am I looking for? 27 degrees, the tangent of 27 degrees. So when I look here, 27 degrees, I'm going to get this number. Now, if you do it on your calculator, you might come up with a different number because there are usually ranges. There's a range from 27 degrees to 28 degrees, and so it just um, it just depends, but we'll still be fine. Just If you want to just use the table, use the table. So now I know the tangent of 27 degrees is 0 0.5095. So I'm going to go back and fill that in now. The tangent of 27 degrees, according to the table that I just looked up in the back of the book, is 0 0.5095. Okay, and then I'm going to keep my, like a good math student, keep my formula going. Sorry, so I bugged my sixth graders. You just insert one thing at a time. If you can insert all the numbers at once, good for you, but I'm trying to go slow. Okay, do we know the height? No, that's what we're trying to find. Do we know the distance? Yes, they gave us that in the example. They said the distance was recorded as 5.75 feet. So now I'm going to rewrite my equation one more time, or my little formula here. And I still don't know height, but I know that my distance now is 5.75. So now basically the last thing you do, and this is 
fun math, okay, you're just going to solve for H. How do I solve for H? Okay, I know you guys can do this. Bring back your algebra brain. Come back to algebra one. Okay, you can do this, right? So all you have to do, right, is figure out how to, um, to get rid of the 5.75. Actually, I'm going to erase this. Okay. Um, you're just going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5.75, right? Because this will cancel these out, right? And once I, with my calculator, multiply 5.75 by 0 0.525, I'm going to come up with 2.929 uh, is my height. But then I want to just kind of say it's going to be approximately, uh, and this is in feet, sorry going to be 2.9 feet approximately. So that tells me a lot of information. Does it, was this person standing when they were shot? Probably not. Maybe they were sitting. Maybe there was a scuffle. Who knows? But I don't think the person was three feet tall. So this is a really good amount of information to have for an investigator because they know that the blood originated from three feet, about three feet. So if the story was um, which, let's see, what was it? It said, did they have a story here? They don't have a story here. Um, let's see what it says on the next page. Oh no, that's problem number one. Sorry. Um, yeah, so they just wanted to know the height. So now we know the height is 2.9 feet. Okay. Which is again, not very tall. So this is going to be really helpful for an investigator who's trying to figure out if they're telling the truth. Okay, so there's one other thing that I need to show you, and we're going to do one more example. Okay, so hopefully you wrote this down. I know it's worked in your book, but this is just one other way to look at it. Okay, you can pause if you want and come back, whatever, but I'm going to keep going. Um, we're going to do one more problem together because one of the things that I didn't show you how to do was how to get the distance. Um, Anyway, so we're going to come back to that. Or maybe I should pause this. I think I'll stop this video because it is pretty long. Give you a second to wrap your head around this example. Maybe cover it up and try to see if you can solve it on your own. And then come back and we will do the last problem together because there is one more new thing to learn. Okay, so I'm going to sign off and we'll do one more video. Okay, see you.